We want you to believe that, though. Mm -hmm. Because if you believe that, you'll work toward that. If you don't believe it, the man who thinks he can and the man who thinks he can are both right. Mm -hmm. If you think you can, you will. If you think you can, you won't. If you think you can't, you won't. So believe that God will come and through work, for you and work that way. I pray, Lord, for restoration, for reconciliation. Thank you, Lord, for wholeness. Thank you, Lord. For strength to do the work, to stick and stay, to hang in there. I love you and I thank you and believe it to be so. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we uh, welcome you all to another episode of His Wife, Her Husband. I am Shamika, His Wife. And I am Patrick, Her Husband. And on this channel, uh, our goal is to help you build. And sustain your marriage. From a biblical perspective. A while back, and we'll link that video. If, if you are listening to the podcast, you will have to go to our YouTube channel. Yeah. Only because the quality, the sound qu quality is different. Um, thank God at that point, we had what we had. Mm -hmm. And uh, through the but blessings we've of the Lord, mm -hmm. we've, God has allowed us to be able to upgrade to mm -hmm. get better mics and things of that nature. So, um, yeah, praise God for that. So, if you are listening uh, on podcasts right now, we're on Spotify and Anchor. I have not been able to get us on, what's the thing called? The Apple thing yet. It's coming, though. Uh, so if you are on Spotify, you will have to go to His Wife, Her Husband YouTube channel, which is His Wife, which is one word, Her Husband, which is one word. If you go on YouTube, somehow... When you type it in the search bar, they split it up into four different words. Four. Four different words. Uh, but it's actually just two words. His wife, her husband. So go on there and you can see part one of Unequally Yoked. And so this is part two of Unequally Yoked, which was highly requested from our family, uh, his wife, her husband, family. So, yeah, that's what we got. And I, I want to say, too, that the unequally yoke was one of those uh, spontaneous conversations. Yeah. Like, we was like, let's do that. Let's share. And uh, so little did we know that um, that there would be one of the the, the the hot topics or the hot picks. It's, it's been amazing. Yeah. And, and I, I did want to say it's so, it's so funny with that uh, particular episode or, yeah, with that particular episode, I ended up uh, servicing a client. And they ran across their video, and they was like, oh, that's Miss Shamika. Mm -hmm, you know, so it's mm -hmm. pretty cool. They typed it in, and mm -hmm. little did, did she know that her manicures <laughs> was doing this. So right. it was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting because Shamika mentioned about <clears throat> um, that being one of the popular ones. And it's one of the ones that people, I, I guess, call it naive on my part, a lot of people were in the same situation that Shamika was in. Uh, earlier in our marriage, yeah, um, and it was interesting that a lot of people were encouraged um, by Shamika's testimony, in, testimony, and and what some of the things that she did early in our marriage when I was not a believer, uh, I had a concept of God. Uh, I still hadn't made my decision on where I was doing Nation of Islam or Christianity, uh, so I was in that mix in my headspace and uh, and still in the streets. Well, not in the streets like I was a hood dude, but you know, still hanging out. Smoking, I wasn't a weed head, <clears throat> but I did smoke weed. I drank a lot, and I chased a lot of women, and uh, that was my thing. And um, But during that time is when Shamika, Shamika had more dedication to our marriage than I did, you know what I'm saying? And so it kind of get into the testimony of what some of the things that Shamika was doing. While, cause you got to go back and look at it, and Shamika gives her testimony, her part of what was happening during the time when we were unequally yoked. And so one of the family members decided, uh, uh, requested that I give, like, what was my feelings? Yeah. Yeah. You know. and, and and then another thing is that um, the unequally, unequally yoke, the idea of unequally yoke has been coming up in conversations. Right. Um, doing uh, manicuring services. And so um, really? some more insights have been coming hmm. out as a result of that. unequally yoke. Initially. When we did the unequally yoke, it was pertaining to just spiritual things. Mm -hmm. But now you find now that you can be unequally yoked in, uh, you know, maybe how you handle finances, 
you know, how you do health, how you do relationships. So we know. say on equal low, that means that the husband and wife maybe not be, the husband and wife may be unequally yoked. When it comes to finances, uh huh, this deep, uh huh. Like, let's say, like one may say, uh, "We just spend as you go," and another believe in budgeting. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know <laughs> that's funny. Well, yeah, <laughs> there you have it. So you know, and again, you I wonder you, you who might that be. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so in a way, you know, it's one. Um, you know, again, it, and, and it'll show up it even pertaining to the things of spirituality. Mm -hmm. So it's not just limited to the things of the Lord or the, you know, spiritual things. You can be unequally yoked emotionally, mentally, psychologically, spiritually. I think I said that already. Right, okay. Financially, relationally, like you you just have different In terms of uh, ideologies and, and goals yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So it's so important to to be able to walk together physically like in how you view fitness and health mm -hmm. and how all of that plays a part mm -hmm. you know it, it 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 matters so we're, we're going to tackle those some of those a, a few a couple of those what Shamika just mentioned but i want to give uh to try to answer the question that the young lady asked yeah and what was my feelings during that particular time when we were unequally yoked uh for, this for, may be our first series for me it was uh I, I didn't want to be, so Shamika, she had rededicated her life to God. And that happened, shoot, before 1997, because that's when we got married, because she, that was almost two years. I was getting ready to that say, was two it years. was, in, now let me say this, I had my awakening in 1997. Right. right. And it became serious, like. I became faithful to the Lord, like no turning back in nineteen, yeah, yeah, December thirty first, nineteen. And so for her, it was she was always asking me to go to church, and this is part of the testimony. I think we have, I've said it before. So from my side of the table, it was stop trying to change me, mm. um, stop trying to force me to do something. So I'm a preacher now, but I had this thing about the preacher taking my money. Uh, the preachers being sleeping around, uh, the preachers um, drinking as much as anybody else, uh, smoking weed. So here I am with this particular mindset that, hey, listen, I don't want no parts of that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really want to go. Um, I'm far removed. Now, I, I'm still battling spiritually in my heart. Like, what do I do? Because at this point, I would say I'm, I'm more agnostic. And not knowing which direction to go. But I still love my Crown Royal, my Michelob, and my um, Bud something. One of them Budweiser's something is a different one. But th that was my thing. And, and I was so stupid. I think I mentioned that. I, would, I wasn't a big time dude. But my purpose for selling marijuana was so I could make sure I had enough money to buy a Crown. To support I your habit. To support yeah. my habit. So let's show you how crazy I am. But... I did want her to keep nagging me over and over and over and over again. Now, I don't know the scripture about the nagging wife, but I knew that's not what I wanted to do. And so for me, every time she pushed me or asked me to come to church to figure out what she wanted, it made me all the more not because I, because I felt like she was trying to control me. Mm. I felt like she was trying to make me do something or make me, you know, go here. And so to show her. That she don't run it. That she don't run me. Mercy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm, 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 you know what I'm saying? I'm from Westwood. You pick the pants and wear the pants. Right. I thought I did. And so, <laughs> and so for me to show her, man, you don't, no, nah, fam, don't do me like that. When I'm ready, I'll do it. And don't, and as long as you keep doing, I tell you what, all right, cool. Every time she, every time she asks me, I'm definitely not going to do it then. So for my point was. It was you, it was I felt, and it, and it may not have been the case, but I'm just telling you how I felt. It, it felt like, okay, she's trying to force me. She's trying to make me. Force your hand, she's yeah. trying to put this religion thing on me, and I wasn't, I wasn't ready for that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So um, it kind of made me want to stay out a little bit more, kind of do a little bit more, try to go f as far away from it. Just so I can show, so you you can call it pride or arrogance or ignorance. I would call it all three, but it it was, but that's what that's what my that's what my headspace was. That's what my mindset was. Uh, so I, I didn't really begin to be like, okay, what's going on? Because 
she's acting different now. You know what I'm saying? Part of me was like, okay, she's Wait a acting Would different. Would you say that again? So I didn't really feel like or start to think about what's going on, what's changing in the in the marriage because you stop nagging. Right. Yeah. So now I'm like, okay, she's cheating on me. You know what I'm saying? Because I know I'm out. Thankfully, I didn't, I didn't cheat with any of the young ladies I approached. But the fact that I wanted to and I was out doing something, I was doing enough. My friend, uh, I'm going to call him out. My friend Jason had a drawer and he stayed in Orange Mound. And he had a top drawer. This is your first time hearing this. <laughs> he had a top drawer and that drawer was full of numbers that I just went out and I was like, yo, 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 boom, boom, boom. I, I, had, I had one line that I used on every woman. It was the same line and it worked. And I just had a drawer full of numbers. It, he had an empty drawer in, on his dresser and I would just throw numbers in the number. That you got. Paper, that, yeah. That was, like your, that was like your black book. I guess thing. so, because I couldn't bring the numbers home. Right. We didn't have cell phones then. We gotcha. had, we gotcha. had beepers. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I understand. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I, I kept a, you know, a drawer full of numbers of girls in his top drawer that at any point I could just, you know, pull out. They were the right number because I made sure before before I left them that this was their number. So I don't whatever. Um yeah, so 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 what was that? Because I got scared. I got you scared you at need that point. to, you need to. <laughs> so I had so I had all these numbers that I would go out and I get so so the potential to cheat was there. Right. And when you started acting extremely nice <laughs> I'm like, oh, who's making love to your own lady? Why are you out making love? And here's the thing about guys. This is real talk. Man, listen. Guys, listen. We can't take it. When a girl do what we're doing, oh, man, it's a, it's a, it's a, man, it's, it's ball game. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, so I'm thinking, okay, my first thought was you're cheating. Just to be close. Right. So you so better my, get it to <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I may have to do a, a, some extras tonight because this is new information. But you but for free, me, you free. Okay. But for for me, so they say that, and then two days, three days later, you're like, you mean uh, yesterday you said, do you really think you know? Be honest. Be honest. No. Anyway, so <laughs> hold on. So I'm like, okay, maybe maybe she's cheating on me. Yeah. And if she is, I can't take that. Like I can't, I can't deal with it. Um, then the other thing was, I think she's trying to kill me. <laughs> I'm like, what she, what is going on? Because she's too nice. Like the, the dinner was ready, and she, she would ask me about my night. How was it tonight? What you mean? How was like that was the most awkward thing to ask. How was it tonight? And I'm like, I don't even know how to create this lie. To leave that part out, because it's gonna seem so choppy. If I like, yeah, we went to the club, and you know, what I'm saying I danced on some gals, and they danced on me, and you know, what I'm saying I touched. Them. Like, how do you explain it to your wife? Like, you know, after after half of the fifth was drunk, I was out of my. Like, how do you explain it? So now it's like, okay, she's being too nice. What's going on? You cheating on me? You gonna do something to me? Or you're preparing to leave me? And both of all three of those thoughts came to my mind, and at this point, I'm saying, "Okay, let me, let me dial it back just a little bit." I was still out there, but here's the thing: for me, it was like this is when I started doing the thing where I would uh, a friend of mine's name, Zayman and Stacy uh, and Jason. What I would do at that point is, at that point, I stopped trying to get girls, and I would see if I could hook them up, if I could talk enough game to her. And then say, oh, yeah, this is my guy right here. You know what I'm saying? Because it was during that time, I was like, okay, if I dial it back and don't approach them for myself, maybe maybe karma wouldn't come to my house. You feel what I'm saying? But I'm still out there, though, you know. Um, You're trying to play it safe now. I'm trying to play You're it safe now because sure I'm, I'm not sure. Stop, that you don't lose your, 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 your game, I mean, like your ability. Right. And so instead of you pitching – Going to the lady for for you, for myself. you going for your partners, right? So gotcha. like, hey, you know, my partner, boom, boom, boom. They were like, well, why you can't talk for yourself? Let me not, guys. I boom, boom, boom. And I, I throw the whole thing. And I, now here's here's the funny part. I wouldn't tell Z or Stacy or Jason what I was doing. I would just call them over, and then say, hey, uh, Z, Keisha, Keisha, Z, and I walk off. 
and they didn't know like what, what what's going on. But the whole time it was the whole thing. So, so, so then now I am in a point at a point where I'm just I'm just repeating this thing over and over again. But I am aware that you and I aren't the best of friends at this point. Like, we're not really gelling. Go ahead. No, 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 go. Because, like, I I would say it wasn't, like, extreme friction either. But we, we definitely were not where we are now. Correct. But we were friends. Like, that was the thing. Like, we, we really promised each other to always be each other's friends. Right. So it wasn't. You know, again, it wasn't like where we are now. But we, yeah, well, I want to say we was arguing and anything oh, like okay. that. I'm, I'm not saying it, okay, that's like that's it. where it came out. Now I'm not saying we were arguing; we were at, just, at each other's throat. But we 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 weren't we weren't yoked. We weren't yoked. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Uh, secretly or silently, the marriage is really pulling apart because we. The scripture said, "How can two walk together except they agree?" I mean, we're not agreeing on what needs to be done. So, Excuse finally. Me. It would be, I could say it would, it would be, descri- we, I could describe it as we were functioning. Right. You know? A functioning like, marriage. Like we, we, a we, functioning we, marriage, we, like a we, functioning alcoholic. Uh-huh. We knew what was expected. Mm-hmm. We knew what to do. You know, we knew, we, we, we knew to be there for each other, but there was no thriving and we were not happy. You right. know, we was just functioning. Correct. That's mm-hmm. good. Functioning marriage. So if, if I could say, if anything from anybody who your spouse is me, I would say don't nag them. Don't nag. Don't nag. Don't force the hand. Um, if if it's you who is in God and you're in Christ, then I would just say just just love them. Just, just love them to the best of your ability. Now, there's no violence going on between my wife and I. So if, if that's your thing and there's violence going on, then I'm telling you, you need to get out of Dodge and, you know, you need to get safe, uh, you and your children. Whether it's husband or wife, but um, that would be one of the things. Just leave them alone. Leave them alone and love them. In the words uh, of the, um, I don't know who, but the, the the younger generation, say less. Right. You know, this is when your silence That's speaks good. volumes, and it's hard. And your I action was, speaks louder. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. It, it it was challenging to, I put it like this. There there was a place where I really had to trust God. And I really did lay it all out in prayer. Like everything I wanted to say, I, I vented all my emotions and frustrations mm-hmm. during that time. And so then, therefore, when you did come home, it was like I could really show gen- genuine interest. Like when yeah. I asked, I really did want to know, like, yeah. how was it? But they used to make you mad when I would want to know what was going yeah. on in the streets and different things like that because you didn't want me to be involved in that. You know? I, my, my fear was, it's so crazy. I'm, so, I'm such a, what a hypocrite in this situation. My fear was I didn't want a woman who wanted to be out. I wanted a home by the woman. Why? Because I'm I'm the guy that's out in the streets. So, and I say in the streets, I don't like I'm some tough guy, y'all. I don't want to get that. There. But I'm out there. You know what I'm saying? And so all of the girls I'm messing with, they either know I got a girlfriend or or I know they got a husband or a boyfriend. And it doesn't make a difference. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, if my if my gal is out there or my wife is out there. Gonna who she going to run into? Who's the me she's going to run into? Mercy. You know what I'm saying? And so it became an issue for me. You know, it was a trust issue. In the, but it was a trust not because of what you were doing. It's because I'm out doing wrong. And so a lot of times people project that onto a person when they're the ones that's doing the wrong in the first place. You feel yeah, what I'm saying? Yes. Um, so, yeah, so that was that was going on. So <laughs> she's saying she was praying, and she was praying. Now, if y'all look at the first video, she'll tell you all the things she was doing. But it was working because... I remember we were at on Director's Row, uh, right in front of Mirage, and I was sipping on Crown. I think I was smoking a Swisher Sweet in the back of my friend's van. And I'm sipping on the Crown, because at this point, I'm like, okay, I keep seeing everybody at the same place. I see everybody at the Denim and Diamond. I see everybody at Ebony Lace. I see everybody down. I see everybody at the, well, I don't think it was 380 Bill then. It's probably it was Studio G. No, it was 380 Bill. It was Studio G then 380B. Like every time I see somebody, Club Superior, uh, I'll, I just I see the same people over and over again. So I'm sitting in front of in my friend's van, drinking on Crown, smoking on a Swisher. It was a Swisher, and I'm thinking to myself, man, it's got to be more life than this. It's got to be more life than this. And I think maybe two weeks later, maybe a month, 
two, two weeks to four weeks later is when she finally asked that last question because now you were dedicated to the church you were, go- you were going to at that time. And it was like, you need to come see where I am. Yeah, and that, that was that part because, like, the truth of the matter, I didn't know what all of the clubs were, but I did mm-hmm. have an idea, you know, like the names or. Like, and then we go to a Crystal Palace, but we didn't, it's funny. We worship. Uh-huh, the place the, where we hung out. The, the place I hung out and whatever, because sometimes we didn't even go inside the Crystal Palace. We would, the, everything that they're doing now when they on the Crystal Palace parking lot, parking lot. We did, except we didn't burn rubber back then. Oh, no, then. It, it was way more intense. The Lord had, the, 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 how, how heavenly father, he has an amazing <laughs> sense of humor. Because now, I didn't go to clubs, but I did hang out in their parking lot. Right. You know, I'm pretty sure we saw each other. Didn't know that we would be husband and wife. I, I, I always get fascinated, sidebar, I always get fascinated about, about their, like, we probably probably were in each other's spaces, mm-hmm. but didn't ever come across each other's face at that time. Right. Like we we no, not in that particular. It's just amazing right. how 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 life does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. So um. Yeah. So so that particular parking lot is where you know whatever the case may be. Now that's the actual place that that we worship. Well, we we were talking about something else before that. Oh oh. So so then he was asking about there's got to be more to. it. There's got to be more to life than this, and, and I want it more. I want it more. So I, I don't want you to think that the person or that the, that your spouse, mm. especially if you're doing, listen, especially if you're doing your love part and they're still out there, I don't want you to think that that is not playing with their mind or their psyche. My wife is very good ab- about when we disagree. She knows when to, uh, okay, he not he tripping, he's not listening. And I always tell her, tell her that, yeah, you may have said something. At the moment, I may have disagreed, but trust me, God working on me. And it's been it's been that way since since that time, since since 1999. And that's where that trust part comes in. Uh, trusting God that He's He's mm-hmm. working. But here's the thing, though. So we're not saying it's gonna be. We're not saying that it's that's that this is gonna be what's what's gonna happen in your marriage. We want you to believe that, though, mm-hmm. because if you believe that, you'll work toward that. If you don't believe it. The man who thinks he can and the man who thinks he can are both right. Mm-hmm. If you think you can, you will. If you think you can, you won't. If you think you can't, you won't. So believe that God will come and through work, for you and work that way. Love that way. Yeah. Because you don't you don't know. How but at least at least you're 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 putting yourself in a position that God will come through. Yeah. God will come through. Now, He will still come through. This is good. Thank you, God. Because the person refused to doesn't mean God didn't come through. Amen. God is not forcing them to choose, but He's working on their heart. Remember when He when He came to you when I was uh, uh when I had the vision, mm-hmm. He was like, "Don't move, I'm working on him." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even when you were praying during that time, that from the time, from 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 that time where you were doing all your praying from 1998 to 1999. I'm having this change, but I'm refusing to push away from it because I'm like, okay, now this is what I'm used to. This, going out, is my, this, is, this is my habit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so it's a habit of mine. One of the things, one of the reasons why um, I'm an only child, so my, my, my guys, they, they, my, they were my brothers. And so for me, it was like the camaraderie of having these brothers that I've always wanted. I didn't want to come away from that because I felt like I would use, lose that camaraderie. And so... The, the person that is out there, the spouse that's out there, that may be the case for them. They're, they're out there, but they really don't want to be out there. I don't think the, the, the person who is doing drugs really want to be there doing drugs. It's just they're in a situation where it's like it's calling them. You feel what I'm saying? So it was working. He was, he was tugging at my heart. He never forced me, and God doesn't do that. But he was tugging on my heart that I'm saying, hey, it's got to be more to life than this, bro. I want something different. I didn't know what the what the come on God help me out. I didn't know what the difference was, but I knew I wanted something different. So then she finally gets to a point where she said, "Can you at least come and see where I am?" So because even even you're asking me to come, it wasn't I want you to come to come to church. It was I want you to come to see where I am, come inside, hear what I'm saying, to make sure see who I do life with, yeah. see who this guy is, hear what he's saying. So you can have an ear and make sure I'm not part of a cult. 
know what I'm saying? That was the thing. So for me now it's like, okay, I'm going to, to protect, protect my wife. Mm-hmm. I'm going to protect my best friend from this wolf in sheep's clothing. He wasn't, but it, that's that was my my thought process about the whole thing. So again, redundant. Don't pressure. Don't push. Love. Love them. Love them. Love them. Love them. If it's a situation where your life is in danger, find safety. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that, that was that's, that's 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 the yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I I do want to say that it is an art to praying your spouse through. Mm. Um, and I and I I, I believe that I w- will want to do um, uh, a talk on that. Okay. You know, so I just want to throw that out there mm. that it's an art to it. You know, when you uh, are able to com- communicate with the heavenly Father. Uh, it helps you to get through life a whole lot better. Like yeah, yeah. I'm not just talking about like he's he's not a genie. Right. He's a a real live feeling being, a person yeah. that cares about us. And, and so, grieves. Mm-hmm. He feels. Yeah, yeah. All of that. And so, um, yeah, it 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 will encourage your heart. It will strengthen your heart. Mm-hmm. It will help you to communicate from the heart too. Like you won't waste your words. Like Patrick can tell you, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't nag him half as much as I was when I was doing it in my own strength. Cause that's just mm-hmm. our form of getting it done. Right. <laughs> Let's just be real. As women, we know how we can get on a nerve. Uh, or as people, we don't. Yeah, say, it's, it's, it's not just women. Yeah. yeah, but you know, we know how to 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 press on a nerve to get what we want. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's something different when you um, step back to see why it, why do I want it? Like I really didn't want anything bad to happen to Patrick. Like, yeah. you know, you don't want anything bad to happen to 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 somebody that you love or know or in that matter it could be an enemy some pain we didn't went through we wouldn't wish, wish it on uh, our worst, worst enemy. enemy right so yeah yeah so so that's that's the i guess the part two from my side of the unequally yoked so my wife mentioned earlier that there are other unequally yoked areas uh finances is one the reason i bring it up finances because i just listened to another um podcast and they were talking about finances and being unequally yoked well in the I wasn't talking about unequally yoked, but they mentioned finances and how the couple have two different thought processes about money. Mm-hmm. And, and I would say, yes, I would bring up money because money is one of those number one uh, areas that uh, create divorce in, in the marriage. You know Lack what I'm saying? Lack of communication yeah. and, and those finances. So how do, you get, how do you become one in finances? Mm. How do you become one? How does that work? How do you, what do you think? Mm. Hmm. He put me on the spot. So uh, I would say one of the ways is definitely coming with a compromise. Right. You know, I think that when it comes to uh, financially yoking, uh, in a way, I think about actual tangible mm-hmm. item uh, of a yoke. You know, it's, okay, okay, gotcha. You know, it's it, it requires a balancing. You okay. know, you can't be. Um, Unequal. <laughs> it would it, be challenging. It's like having a a, a, a horse and a, a chihuahua. Like <laughs> I, I couldn't think of anything. But just, oh, it's like it's just off. Yeah. <laughs> like the natures are are different. Yeah. Though though their minds, the, you know, the way their their instinct, they're right. just different. They just they just different. So um, I would say definitely depending on the extent of um, the financial uh, uh, report, you may have to go and see a financial advisor Correct. to help, you know, put you back on track. Um, it just depends, again, on the extent of it, how bad your credit is, you know, how much income coming in, how much is going out, <laughs> habits, all of that stuff. All of that matters, whatever, Patrick. But then the other thing, too, is that if it's not so severe, I think that something as simple as working on a goal together. That's good. Will have, will be, uh, uh, you know, not together. Now, it's not I want a house and you want a vacation. Like, right. it has to be, again, a compromised goal. Mm-hmm. This is what I want us to do together. And you work to s- and watch it it grow, right? And I think that that will get you at least on the road to mm-hmm. now doing your finances together, you know, or or you know building your financial I, house I, together. So I'm I'm a, I'm gonna do a link because we're gonna take 
all of, we're going to take all of their topics and I'm going I'm to put a link uh, to their video in the bottom of our YouTube description. Uh, but we're going to take all of their topics and we're going to break them down and make them one individual episode. Um, I mean, several episodes. But one of the things they said that I was like, okay, cool, we do that. But they had a different word for it. I might steal that word too. But they had like what's called a a flex, um, I want to say flex account. I'm going to say flex account. They had a flex account. You know what I'm saying? Meaning this is flexible for you. Whatever you want to spend your, your portion of flex account on, you can do that. Whatever I own. So we have what's called a splurge account. So we have like 10%. We go, we give away 10%. And then 10% is our splurge account. That's our money to spend on whatever we want to spend. I can't say don't buy that. And she can't say don't buy this. And so that's what they were going through. They had this look. And so this was, they, they got this two months ago. And they realized this helped them because each one of them wanted to spend money on something that cost a lot. And the other person thought it wasn't valuable enough. But but he thought it was valuable. And there's certain thing that she wanted, he didn't consider it like that's not worth spending money on. But for her, it was like, yeah, but this this is what I value. You know what I'm saying? So they created a flex account. So we have the same thing. We have a what we call a splurge account. So 10% to God, 10% on our splurge account. We can buy whatever we want to buy, 20% savings, and we make sure that the expenses don't exceed 50 to 60% of our, our, our income. And so now we're, we're back. We just paid off our cars, and we're back in the point where we can start doing that again or doing something similar to that. And so, so I think this allows, I think that flex part is what I want to get to. That flex or that splurge part, I think that, and you don't have to be 10%. It's whatever you guys communicate. But I think that helps out so the person's not spending or overspending in the account. Because if, if you get ready to go to pay the light bill and then you 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 down, you you kind of upset or is there's an issue. You feel what I'm saying? So I, I think that that helps out in the unequally yoke. That may be a way for 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 you married couples to to consider something like that. Uh, but Shamika said something that was the key thing, and that was going to someone to get counseling to figure out or to help you. Um, to help you come up with a a spending plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Counseling and repair is is a good. You okay. know, I, th I think that will be the one thing that um that I do want you to remember that there is hope, you know, whether you're going through uh whether you may be experiencing spiritual bankruptcy or financial bankruptcy. Yeah. That there is uh a, a formula, you know, you go there to repair, to restore, to rebuild. So be encouraged. Yeah. Don't be discouraged. Don't be weary in doing well because it will. you will bring forth a, a harvest of what you desire w if you put forth or when you put forth the effort to believe God and do the work that he gives you to do. Now, that work is believing and doing his word. Oh, that's a whole nother. Y'all mm -hmm. make me start preaching, but it's not just enough to say about it. You have to say and do and be about it. Yep. So here's what I want for, especially for those of you on. I think you can make comments on YouTube for for, for our his wife or husband family that's on YouTube. I want you to put in the comment section areas that you feel that couples are unequally yoked in. Now we're not talking about talking about you know uh, Christian versus non-Christian. We're talking about you're married, you're already married, but but me and my spouse we are unequally yoked in this area. How do we fix that? Mm -hmm. I was going to say, you know, another word that will be described as unequally yoked. It's like you experiencing defeat, like you you losing, mm -hmm. you know, like it's like I don't like I don't like Patrick when it comes to this or I don't like Shamika when it comes to this. Like, what is it that you are feeling exhaustion or defeat or you keep taking L's? That's yeah. what we want to hear about. Yeah. But that area that. Yeah. So that area that you're unequally yoked, that you're not winning in. What what are those areas? You know what I'm saying? And and it, it, or if you don't want to put it in the comment section, send us an email. Make sure the title, the subject line is unequally yoked topic, unequally yoked topic, and just type the topic in in the email. So send that email like to his wife, her husband, ninety seven at gmail dot com. His wife, her husband, ninety seven at gmail dot com. And what else? That's it. That's all. That's it. That's all. If you have not gotten your book, uh, Disciple, The Disciples' Prayer, 
uh, prayer made simple for anyone, please go get your copy. The link is in the description box below. If you do, when you do buy your copies, take a picture holding your journal and your booklet together and send us a uh, tag us on Instagram at his wife, her husband 97. Again, Instagram at his wife, her husband 97. Thank you guys for being a part of this. Go ahead. You know what I will say too the, the book is not uh, an exhaustive approach to prayer, mm -hmm. it really is an approachable book. I'm not just saying it because I'm the author, but. I am telling you that as the, what? Uh, the author, <laughs> the author, I am saying that because a lot of times uh, w w when we hear the word prayer, it seems so far fetched and so like, oh, this for them or like this mega person. Of, I don't know. But just know that um, I, I believe that this book would definitely be the uh, prerequisite or just to help you be a relationship with the Lord on your own so yeah. that you can better pray for your spouse or someone else. Um, but in this channel, we're talking about how you can build and sustain your marriage right. through a biblical perspective. And prayer is one of the essential, uh, core essentials to doing that. Yeah. And so I believe that this book, I know that it will, that it will bless you to be able to approach prayer and you will leave saying, oh, okay, that's simple. <laughs> it's that simple. Like, it's simple. Yeah. yeah, it's simple. That's good. And now, again, it, 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 prayer may not always be easy. And the things that God give us to do may not always be easy. They are simple, though. Yeah. And you have to ha make, make, up, make up your mind. You have to have your heart in check. Make sure that it's lined up. Make sure that your mind is set on a, on a course that the Lord has called us to. And putting our hands, hands represents those tools that do the work that from an idea or whatever that inspiration that you receive from your mind, it it is the tool that God uses to bring about it, bring it into fruition. Again, that's that the Holy Holy Ghost power behind the hands to mm -hmm, do the work. Mm -hmm. That's that holy work. And holy just simply means that. Uh, that sacred work, that set, set aside, aside work, that specifically that God has given you to do. Yeah. So yeah, He wants to hear from you. Can I? Can I intercede for you? I can. I know that God hears me. Yeah. But I want you to have the same confidence that guess what? He hear you too, and He want to hear you. And don't just be using my little line as a three way call <laughs> to get. <laughs> Y'all don't know about that three way. <laughs> don't be using me to ask your daddy for for it. You know. I, I think about, and then this is. Ugh, and uh, then that's it. I think about when I was growing up, my mama used to absolutely hate if I had one of my friends to ask her Correct. for something that I could have asked her Correct. for. The answer was an automatic no. no. Big facts. So now imagine again, if y'all those of you who know me know, in my imagination it goes where it go. Imagine if God was like, Nope. Because you didn't ask. The answer is no. Yeah. You don't want anyone to speak on your behalf. Correct. When he is, he has put in the earth the tool, the Bible, to teach you how to approach him. Yeah. Fix your house. Get your spiritual house in order. Yeah. Because guess what? It we There are some prayers he want to answer, and they are only going to be answered when you ask. And you asking, Ken, I'm a pastor, so I'm not saying nothing wrong with asking you're a pastor. You don't know what your pastor been doing. You don't know if he ain't been treating his wife right. Because the scripture his says. children right. It's his, if, if you his don't deal with your order. wife with understanding. If you don't deal with your wife with understanding, husband. God said I ain't going to hear your prayer. So here you are. Ask your pastor. Would you. Not pastor. Pastor. Would you please pray. Pastor. But he ain't. Pastor ain't even treating his wife right. So God not hearing his prayer. Mm. And you wonder like what's going on. God like fam. I want to hear from you. Well, my life ain't right either. But that's why I want to hear from you because your life not right. So we can build this relationship so I can start giving you the things that need to be done. As I think in the, uh, the first part of the book was talking about as, as we are talking to God in heaven, God is then answering requests that we've given to him is what she wrote in the book. And, and in that, he answers from heaven's perspective mm -hmm. for an answer here on earth. But he wants to deal with, with us personally. So I, we, we kind of... Veered off, but yeah, but that was good stuff, yeah. And you know what? 
and 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 when you build in relationship, you will learn that. And and I'm tell you, look, the, the the heavenly Father, He is so good. But anyway, when you give Him your request, guess what? Your heart will be strengthened, and He will begin to trust you, and He will give you the request and the desires of His heart, mm. so that you can get it done. Yeah. Like you would love Him so much that you say, Lord, I want to do this for you. Yeah. My pleasure to serve you. Then when we say, I don't mind waiting, that's not like waiting. Waiting like just sitting there just uh, just uh, no it's like I don't mind waiting on you like what is it that you, what can I do for you what can I do to make uh, make your space beautiful like my prayer be a sweet aroma versus all this craziness that's coming up anyway <sighs> anyway so yeah so that that is the end of this episode I think so yeah if you have any questions you want us to answer, please send those questions to his wife, her husband, 97 at gmail.com. His wife, her husband, 97 at gmail.com. Look at the description box. Get you a uh, book. Get you some free some free stock from uh, Webull. <laughs> you know, we got a bunch of stuff under yeah, the description box. So make sure you go through there and uh, click on the link and get some of those And we things. look forward to hearing from y'all. Yeah. Be encouraged. Be blessed. Know that, listen, your marriage ain't in such a big of a mess that it cannot be blessed. Amen. Amen. I like that. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.